it's Alex the Car Girl with Molly. As most of you know, I run Molly filters on my Hemi race engine as well as my personal car. Both vehicles use what is commonly referred to as a spin-on or canister style filter. And if you've ever shopped for spin-on oil filters, you know you can spend less than three bucks to as much as $15 on a spin-on oil filter. I've often wondered if there was really much difference between the $3 filter and the high-priced one. So today, with Bill McKnight's help, we're going to look inside a number of oil filters and see if there's any visible difference. I'm going to turn it over to Bill and see what he has for us. Well, thanks, Alex. I'm glad to have the opportunity to do this. What I did last week was I went online and found our nearest auto parts store, which is only about 10 minutes from here, and I shopped for filters online. Now, I picked a particular vehicle, a 2008 6.1 liter Hemi Dodge, ah. because you got a Dodge that you race, and I got a Hemi in my Jeep, and I thought, oh, well, what the heck, we might as well get something yeah. that we both can relate to. So counting the Molly filter, I actually acquired seven different brands of filters last week for that particular engine. And the price was $399 for the cheapest, and the high price was $999. They didn't have the $15 filter. It showed on the website, but they didn't have one in the store. So I'm guessing they don't sell many $15 filters. All right, so let's see what's inside of them. How are we gonna see that? Well, it's pretty simple. What I'm doing is using a common race car tool. As a matter of fact, it's laying right here in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it's called a filter can cutter. And at race car guys, what they do, and gals for that matter, yeah. they cut dirty filters apart looking for damage, you know, metal in there that would indicate that the engine's going bad. We're going to use that tool here to cut apart brand new clean filters okay. and look and see if we can see a difference in the construction. So let me grab a filter and we'll get started with that can cutter. Could you hand me one of those sure. here? I got three of them just in case we had to practice a little bit. So it's you pretty might. simple. We take the filter out, we set it in the can cutter like this, and then this little handle here is forcing a sharp pointed wheel into that canister. If you ever cut copper tubing or anything like that, you know, on a plumbing job or working on your race car, it's just kind of like a giant tubing cutter. So what I do is I sit it on there and I just keep turning this filter and then tightening this handle up a little bit, and pretty soon I'll cut right through here. Want, want to try one? Sure. Yeah, why not? So. There's that filter. I'll set mine over here. You grab another one, and uh, we'll just see how easy it is. Do I tip it over like this? Well, what I do, Alex, is I set it over here at the edge of the table so I can turn it like this, okay. and then I turn the handle. So let me scoot out of the road a little bit there so you can try it. You have to be left-handed. Did I mention that? Oh. <laughs> this is a left-handed filter cutter. All right, now turn the canister. It shouldn't be hard to turn. If it gets too hard to turn, you're turning the hand wheel okay. in too quickly. Because, see there, it's hard to turn. So you just go around. It should turn real easy. And when it turns real easy, then you turn this in a little bit more. Okay. So round and round we go. Getting uh, so easier. So you just, you just make it like a little bit. You yeah, just a little at a time. Little. Now you're getting it. So once it turns easy, then you tighten the hand wheel up just a little. There you go. And pretty soon you'll feel it give. And that's when you start to cut through. And that's also when you need to be the most careful. Because if you're going to cut yourself, it's going to be when this thing gives. So, How's it going? Pretty good? Oh, there. there I hear go. it. Let's tighten yep. Keep going. Now be careful this time. and Just keep going gently. And pretty soon it'll cut through. Piece of cake, huh? Sort of. <laughs> there you go. It's almost there. I bet oh. you can hardly wait to cut the other seven apart I bought, huh? <laughs> Can't wait. I'm dying. All right. Something All right. went wrong here. Well, you're almost there. What we'll do now, and I, I have a little more experience. Plus, I have medical insurance, so just oh, in excellent. case something bad happens. You get old like me, you have to have that. So what we, you were almost there. Now all I do is bend that filter back and forth. Oh, okay. Bingo. There I am. Well, Bill, if we've got six more of these to cut, this is going to have to be an hour-long video. This is work. Well, Alex, I hope you don't mind, but last week before you came to town, I took this very cutter here and I cut all six of these filters open for you. Oh, I don't mind at all. 
Well, that's good because if you if you were upset, I'd have to go to the store and get six more, and we'd have to do this today. So that's okay. I'm glad you don't mind. Now that all the hard work is done, what exactly are we looking for inside these filter canisters? Well, the first thing we look for, and I can open a couple of these so you can see them, is what we're looking at is the filter paper in here. We call it the media, but it's actually the filter paper. Okay. And that paper is what the dirty oil has to pass through in order to clean it and get all the crap out. And it's fairly simple. Uh, what we figure is the more pleats that are inside of a filter, the more filtering capacity it has. So one of the things we could do, and I actually did do this when we were on break, is we can count the number of pleats in this filter. And I counted 46 in that filter. And then I took one of these filters over here, I, actually it was the $3.99 one, and I took that filter and I opened it up. And of course it's got pleated paper in here as well. But I only counted 36 pleats in it. So 46, 36. So it doesn't take long to figure out which one of these filters is going to plug up first and not be mm -hmm. any, any good. Right. Okay. So we could take every one of these if we had time and we can count the pleats in it. Now most of you aren't going to do this because you're going to compare maybe one filter to another rather than one filter to the six others. Right. And so it's pretty simple. Cut them open, count the number of pleats, and all else fails, go with the one that's got the most pleats. Make sense? Makes sense. Bill, could you point out to the viewers what happens when the media gets clogged or dirty with debris? Well, I'm glad you asked that because as a youngster, when I was your age, all my friends were bragging, you know, and saying, oh, you know what, Alex, I never change my oil filter. I change my oil every, you know, every six months, but I just leave the filter in there. That saves money that way. But what happens in that case, Alex, every one of these filters, let's look at the Molly one for starters. If you notice right here where I'm pointing with my pen, notice this little black spot here? I do, yeah. Okay. It was brand F. You notice there's a little spring and a plunger here? Okay. And this filter over here, it's got a little black spot that I can push up and down with my pen. Mm -hmm. Well, what those are called are pressure relief valves. And these filters all have a pressure release valve. And so what happens is the filter media gets clogged, the oil pressure starts to build up because we're trying to force oil through that clogged filter. Dirty stuff, yeah. Well, what happens when it hits whatever the pressure relief valve is, maybe 60 PSI or 80 or whatever the manufacturer set it at, that valve opens and all the dirty oil just runs right back into the engine and bypasses the filter totally. Mm -hmm. So you could run that filter the entire life of the vehicle, even your little old car, which I think is pretty old. But what happens as soon as it's plugged, you know, in a couple months, the oil just goes back into the engine. So you pump dirty oil through your engine forever. Well, Bill, we've done it again. I can see our director, Jenny, pointing to her watch, meaning we need to wrap it up for today. But I know we've got more to talk about. Anti-drain back valves, end plates, media support, proper gluing and clamping of the media during manufacturing, and anti-surge protection. And Alex, you claim not to know much about filters when you got here today, and you're rattling these terms off. I think you've been studying. Wow. But you're right. We've, we need to start again and have part two of this and cover these other features because they're really important too. Yes. As, as we can see here already, there's a lot inside of a canister oil filler. Yes. Yeah, so come back for part two.